Hello and welcome back. In my last video, I talk about orthogonal sets of vectors and uh, orthonormal sets of vectors and how to find an orthogonal set of vectors from a orthogonal set of vectors. Today, we are going to talk about our results, oh, which is a very important results in vector space. And so, here let me state the results. So, results are the theorem. So, here we have the results. So, it says that any set, uh, an orthogonal set of normal vectors in Rn is linearly independent. So, let me write that down. An orthogonal set, an orthogonal set, uh, an orthogonal set of non-null vectors of non-null non-null means non-zero vectors non-zero or non-null vectors so let me write down non-zeros uh, so an orthogonal set of non-zero vectors in Rn in Rn is linearly independent is linearly independent linearly independent so so, so because we get so this result said that we if, if we have an any set any set of non-zero uh, orthonormal orthogonal vectors a set of orthogonal non-zero orthogonal vectors then the set the vectors are linearly independent to each other or the set is linearly independent. So how to show this result? So let me prove this results. So prove this result. So let let alpha 1 so alpha 1 alpha 2 in this way suppose we have a k number of vectors so alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha k be a set of orthogonal vector be a set of orthogonal orthogonal vectors so uh, this is a set of orthogonal vectors in Rn, so this is a set of eight orthogonal vectors in an Euclidean space Rn. So what we have to show this set is an or in linearly independent. So for that, what we have to do? So now what we have to do? Now we have to write this down: C1 alpha 1 plus C2 alpha 2, uh, C2 alpha 2 plus in this way we have CK alpha K which is equals to the zero vector of Rn or the theta or the zero vector of Rn zero this zero is the zero vectors this zero is the zero vector in Rn so we have to write in this way if the each C1, C2, Ck if we can find if all the C1, C2 up to Ck are equals to zero then this set is linearly independent or the set of vectors is linearly independent. So for that what we have to do first of all so let, uh, let me show that so first we show that C1 have to be equals to zero. What we going to do we just multiply so now now what we can write now C1 alpha 1 plus C2 alpha 2 so in this way Ck alpha k let's multiply this vector this whole vectors with the vectors alpha 1 so multiply this whole vectors with alpha 1 so in this direction so after multiplications in this side from this equation so you multiply alpha 1 both side of this equation if I multiply basically both side of equation 1 so in this side we get this vectors into alpha 1 and here we have 0 into alpha 1 basically 0 into inner product of 0 with any vector gives us 0 so in this side we get 0 so now in this sides we know that Rem let me quickly uh, remind you this result so, so this basically going to have so this going to have c1 alpha 1 multiply with alpha 1 plus c2 alpha 2 multiply with alpha 1 plus ck alpha k multiply with alpha 1 equals to 0 because uh, we know from the inner product so let me write down the results we used over here so the results is it says that if alpha plus beta multiplied if we have two vector alpha plus beta multiply if I take inner product with this vector we get 
alpha dot gamma plus beta dot gamma we use the same results so here we multiply each quantity with alpha 1 and next we going to use the another property is C alpha with gamma basically we can take the out C from that and we can write alpha dot gamma from there this is another results we have talk about this results in our previous videos so here we use these two results of inner product so first result is is a distributive the inner product is the follow the distributive property and second is we can take out the constant part from the inner product so we're going to use this uh, and so let me erase this part we have to use this property over here so if we have already used the first property then second property from the second property we can just take out the constant part so we get alpha 1 multiply with alpha 1 c2 alpha 2 multiplied with alpha 1 in this way ck multiply with alpha k dot alpha 1 equals to the 0 vectors now what we know because this set of vectors is orthogonal this set of vectors is orthogonal so remember that if I alpha i alpha j is equals to 0 the scalar 0 uh, if i not equals to z so here for this here alpha 1 is alpha 1 so i and j are same form here but here we have 2 and 1 so it's going to be 0 here we have k and 1 this is going to give and so all the quantity 3 and 1 4 and 1 so all are all this part from here are going to be equals to 0 so only we have this part that c1 into alpha 1 dot alpha 1 equals to 0 now you can see that alpha 1 into alpha 1 is basically uh, so alpha 1 is alpha 1 now here this this scalar this is the scalar 0 when I multiply this inner product so this is the scalar 0 remember that here we have this vector 0 and here we have the scalar 0 and this inner product is a scalar quantity from there so because alpha 1 the, we take the non-zero vectors that's the important word the non-zero vectors so alpha 1 dot multi one, alpha 1 gives us a non-zero quantity so we can divide it, that non-zero quantity and from there we get 0 by that non-zero quantity alpha 1 dot alpha 1 because alpha 1 all the vectors in the set are non-zero so we can divide it by that and we get the 0 so c1 is equals to 0 so similarly what we're going to do similarly so so we have we achieve the results that c1 have to be equals to 0 from there similarly what we have to do so first of all let me erase this and then I will talk about that so okay so here we go so next if I take C1 alpha 1 plus C2 alpha 2 if I multiply the equation 1 uh, with the vector alpha 2 CK alpha K into alpha 2 we again get bas basically using the same form we can write that from here if I multiply then let me quickly multiply this part uh, and we know that the distributive follow, follow for inner product so we can write in this way c2 alpha 2 dot alpha 2 ck alpha k dot alpha 2 equals to 0 this is the scalar 0 over here that was the vector 0 now we can take out the constant part or the scalar part we have alpha 1 alpha 2 and c2 alpha 2 multiply with alpha 2 in this way ck alpha k multiply with alpha 2 equals to 0 because this is an orthogonal set of vectors so all the quantity alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha k alpha all are going to be equals to 0 so only the part left for us is alpha 2 multiply with alpha 2 which is equals to 0 now alpha 2 is a non-zero vectors again let me remind you we are taking the set of non-zero vectors so alpha 2 into multi 2 gives us the non-zero value so from there we get c2 equals to 0 similarly if I with multiply with alpha 3 we get 
the C3 equals to 0. If I multiply with alpha 4, we get the all the quantity basically. In this way, we'll get that all the coefficients C1, C2, in this way up to CK, all the scalars going to be equals to 0. So, so what we have? So, from there, so, so let me erase this part. Okay. Okay. So what we have? We have the all the quantities C1, C2, all the coefficients C1, C2, Ck are going to be equals to zero. Thus the vectors, thus the set, thus uh, the set alpha one, alpha two, alpha k. Uh, this sets is uh, linearly independent. Is uh, linearly independent, linearly independent sets of vectors of vectors. So, this is linearly independent set of vectors in Rn. So, let me give you an example of an orthogonal set and from there we will um, verify these results. So, we will be going to verify these results by stating an example. So, we will take with we will work with the same example. We will work with same example. So, what was our example? Our example was, so we have the set of vectors 1, 2, 2, I think, yeah. It was 1, 2, 2. The next one is 2, minus 2, 1. And the third one, I think it was 1, 2, 1 and minus 2. Okay, so this was the set. So, is an orthogonal and each vectors in this set are non-zero. So, is a set of set of non-zero, non-zero, uh, or non-zero vectors is an is a is an orthogonal set of orthogonal. So, let me write then orthogonal set of non-zero vectors. So, this is a set of orthogonal non-zero vectors. So, from that, if this result is true, uh, and that's, uh, we already proved that the result is true, we're going to verify that from here, we will have the same results. So, what we're going to do? So, let me write down C1 into 1, 2, 2, plus C2 into 2, minus 2, 1, plus c3 into 2 1 minus 2 which is equals to 0 from there we have to find that c1 c2 c3 equals to 0 you can do it in two different way the way we have proved uh, we use the trick in or the methods in our proof you can use that trick so what for that what we have to do we have to multiply uh, the whole quantity so what we have to multiply so we have to multiply the whole quantity uh, C2 2 minus 2 1 plus C3 uh, 2 1 minus 2 with uh, the vector alpha 1 alpha 1. So you have to, you can multiply in this way. So from there you can let me write that down from the, let me find that out. So in the first uh, in the way we proved um, we use the uh, methods in our proof. So we use the same method over here. We first multiply with our first vectors. So, what we get? We get C1 into uh, 1, 2, 2 uh, dot 1, 2, 2 from here plus C2 into 2 minus 2, 1 dot 1, 2, 2 plus C3 into 2, 1 minus 2 dot 1, 2, 2 which is equals to 0. So, because this is equals to 0, so what we get from there? So, first of all, if I form the first part, we get 9 basically. Uh, from C2 part, you can see that it will going to have 2 into 1. So, let me write 2 into 1 minus 2 into 2 plus uh, 1 into 2 plus C3. Again, we have 2 into 1 plus 1 into 2 minus 2 into 2 equals to 0. Now we can clearly see that. So we only get that alpha 1 dot alpha 1. 
the if I uh, assume that this is our alpha one, so we get only nine. Here we get zero. Here also we get zero. So this equals to zero. So from there we get c1 equals to zero. Similarly, if we multiply with the second vectors, we will get the c2 equals to zero. If I multiply with the third vector, we uh, we will get c3 equals to zero. In ca in this way, you can also check that these three vectors are linearly independent. But we what we going to do over here? We will use our previous method to check a set of vectors is linearly independent or not. So here you can see that you have three vectors and we have R3. So we can use the determinant formula to verify or check the set of vectors uh, linearly independent or the set is linearly independent or not. So we will use that method. So, so first of all let me erase this part. So here we have, uh, so here we have these vectors 1, 2, 2, 2, minus 2, 1 and here we have 2, 1, minus 2. So from there what we get? We get 1 into uh, 4 minus 1 plus 2 into what we get? Uh, uh, we get 2 uh, plus 2. Uh, I think it was 2. So it will be 4 I think. Uh, 2 plus 2 is going to be 4. And from there we have 2. And this is 2 plus 4 from there. So we get 3 plus 6, 12. And 8 plus 2 is 16. So you we can see that this will be 21 which is not equals to 0. Thus the set of vectors, thus the C set is linearly independent set. Hence the set is linearly independent. Hence the set is uh, linearly independent. You can use any methods to check linearly independent as you wish. You can use different method to check the C set is linearly independent or not. So for this example the result is verified. So let me give you an exercise. So quickly give you an exercise you have to do by yourself. So do this exercise. So exercise. Uh, so find an orthonormal. Find a set with three vectors set with three vectors uh, so let me write find an orthonormal set of three vector orthogonal set of three vectors find an orthogonal set uh, with three vectors in R4 find a set find an orthogonal set with three vectors in R4 and from their deduce from their they are deduce from they are deduce deduce uh, an orthonormal an orthonormal set in R4 and check that and check that the vectors and check the set is linearly independent. Check the set is linearly independent or not. So what we have to do in R4, so in R4 you have to find a set A with three vectors alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3. So in R4 you have to find a set A with three vectors and you have to check that this set first of all you have to check that this set you have to show that in such a way you have to construct that the set is an orthogonal set and from there find a set B which is orthonormal which is an orthonormal set and for that set A check that the set is linearly independent linearly independent that is the task you have to do by yourselves and if you solve by yourselves or if, if you have any difficulty 
just contact me uh, and thank you for watching please come back in my next video